welcome to the June 8th Hemp Show powered by CanTrade. My name is Mark Stelly. I'm the CEO of CanTrade and the host of the Hemp Show. All right, next up on the Hemp Show is Michael Brown, the co-founder of Eternal Hemp. Michael has, Michael has had a 20-year career spanning multiple sector, sectors, ranging from technology to real estate. As a co-founder of Eternal Hemp, he is focused on opportunity zones, indoor vertical farming, wellness ventures, and multifamily investment. Thank you for joining us today, Michael, and welcome to The Hemp Show. Hey, Matt. Great to see you. Great to be here. Excellent. Well, awesome for making it. Um, you know, I'd love to kind of start from the top to, to learn a bit more about your experience, how you made the transition from, you know, this other, these other careers, because I'm always curious. I always love to know how people got into the space. And then ultimately, what was your experience, you know, the first year, two years, however long it's been, and then how that brought you to where you're at now? Yeah, so I think it's a, you know, a typical story of, uh, of uh, tripping and falling into a great opportunity. Uh, you know, my partner and I, who we both don't come from the Canada space, my partner comes from real estate over, you know, 25 years of experience, ground up development, et cetera, 2 billion in transactions. I come from the technology world and kind of straddled into real estate within the last 10 years. So we come at it very differently. We look at this industry more as like infrastructure, uh, just because of the type of technology that I did was a lot of you know, high-end server side type technology. And of course my partner did uh, development. So really we met at a real estate conference, which is uh, you know, our, our, our meeting ground. And from that, what we started looking at was opportunity zones. Uh, opportunity zones being tax-free uh, um, areas within the country in which you can uh, invest within and have a significant tax reduction over 10 years hold. So it was created by the Trump administration. It's a great program. So we were looking at different opportunities within the opportunity zone. And we saw that you know, the asset prices for real estate were significantly high. So we said, you know, when everyone's looking left, look right. And we said, well, there's an opportunity in the opportunity zones to build out uh, a business. And what would that look like? What are the businesses that are flourishing? So through a significant number of iterations and just tapping our network and seeing what, what markets are really moving, we saw a huge market opportunity within the cannabis space and specifically within the hemp space. We saw that you know, pharma was on the sidelines. We saw that big tobacco was on the sidelines. We saw that there was significant legislation that was uh, coming up. And in addition to that, we saw that there was an opportunity for us to be an environmentally sound company to really try something a little bit differently where we're stitching it into the fabric of our company. And most importantly, to uh, do well by doing good. And so with that, we uh, formed a company that uh, we formed Eternal Hemp. We uh, partnered with a handful of social uh, enterprise uh, nonprofits uh, to, uh, to identify and hire returning citizens, also known as formerly incarcerated individuals as part of our workforce. So really the way that we look at this is we're going to provide, uh, we are providing high quality uh, indoor grown hemp. Uh, we don't do THC at current, uh, at a lower cost in, in, in essence from others in the market utilizing some new, te new technology, new technology. But the key thing is really having integrated within that is our social impact of returning citizens and really focusing on recidivism and providing living wages. And of course, extending the multiplier effect of, uh, of, uh, you know, of any good charity or any good giving. Uh, so you asked me another question in terms of what it's been like to be in this industry. Uh, to say the least, this has been crazy. <laughs> we have uh, it has been a very interesting uh, ride. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, wow. Coming from coming from uh, my partner, coming from construction and real estate, you know, that has its hurdles. Technology. And, and sorry, I missed. I might have missed the time frames earlier. What yeah. What year was it when you got into this industry? What What years are we talking about? Oh, 2019. So we got in okay. 2019. Uh, and, you know, battled our way through 2020 because it was the end of 2019. And, great, you know, great time met... to start a business, right? Yeah, like, wait, wait, hey, man, let's let's start a business during a pandemic. Yes, let's sign up for that one. And, uh, you know, what we learned is um, 
there's a what's needed in this business and it's great to see other people you know on your show that are really dedicated to this is professionalism right a certain accountability and it's what can is really doing now right providing that professionalism to get, you know what typical supply chains provide um you know within other industries and so we saw that as a huge opportunity we said all right the all the brain damage that we've had from you know navigating suppliers, navigating grower systems and things like that, you know, we think that this is the real, you know, the real avenue for opportunity, which is really provide a level of professionalism, complete transparency, and then have weaved into our business as a core, core aspect, our social, our social impact. Excellent. So, I mean, what you're doing with the social impact is amazing, especially employing, uh, you know, formerly formerly incarcerated individuals, I uh, find it interesting, you know, we've, we've actually, we've actually had some uh, former businesses on the show that, that were outfitting a prison, a, a former prison wow. to be a grow house. And I couldn't help but think how many of those individuals that had been in that prison at one point were in there for some sort of cannabis related crime. Now, just a quick broad question, which you may not, you may not, um, you may not specifically know, but mm -hmm. are you, do you currently have employees that were formerly incarcerated for, for drug crimes, such as, you know, say cannabis, marijuana, or, or anything else? Yes. Yeah, so yes, we, we are currently screening, we're hiring our first batch of employees, like as we speak. So we're in early days, but we're hiring our first batch of, of employees. And we know that a handful of them do have crimes. Uh, have committed this, you know, this, this, uh, this, or unless according to the government, this crime. Yeah. Well, that, that was, uh, actually, know, we don't shy away from that. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's excellent, right? When yeah. you, when you get out to, to, um, you know, limit their recidivism and, and going back to prison, you have to have a job, yeah. right? You have to have a purpose when you yeah. get out. And a lot of people are alienated from half the workforce or, or 90% of the workforce. Like, what are you supposed to do? You know, so it's, it's exactly. crazy. Um, now, that was actually going to be my next question is having started in, in 2019 and then ultimately building the business through 2020, what's the current status of the business? You know, where, where are you guys at not right now? Um, you know, where are you guys going to go? Yeah, so we're located in Wilmington, Delaware. Right now, we're currently outfitting uh, 16,000 square feet, our initial 16,000 square feet. We have an offtake agreement with a, a large genetics company that uh, is, requ is requesting or is buying from us 24,000 pounds uh, this year for the next two years. So we, we're scaling fairly quickly. Um, you know, we're going in, um, we're still raising capital. So we're in our, we're, I would say our angel round or seed round, well, angel round, uh, which is great. Um, and that's, that's going pretty, that's going very well. Um, but, you know, really the next steps after this is because of the way that we're, our, our technology, our growing system works, we have an additional 72,000 square feet that's available to us. Uh, and we're talking with a handful of clients to have that satisfied as well. So really, you know, our, 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 our view of the business is, you know, we're contract growers in many ways. Uh, we don't really do products. We do B, we're completely B2B. And, you know, we're very, we're very tailored in that if you wish for us to grow you know, 50,000 pounds uh, this year for uh, Bubba Kush, you know, we'll grow that specifically for you. We, 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 we believe a lot of the hurdles within this industry is the, you know, grow it and they will come. And we realize that just from looking from our history, that's definitely not the uh, method in which we wish to proceed. So just taking a different, you know, a different angle to the entire, uh, to, the, to the business model, as well as to uh, what we believe is necessary within the industry. And it's a, and it's a supply chain. Right. A lot of people that came into the industry did the, did the, if, if you grow it, they will come, or if you grow it, they will buy, right. Regardless of what they were growing. So the way you're going about it is a, is a much smarter yeah. method. Yeah. Now, as far as the, the contact yeah. gro contract growing, do you have a sweet spot client or is it kind of just looking for, for all sides? Well, we believe that there's a huge opportunity within the mid to small market. So we're looking at chains of smoke shops, anywhere, anyone that's, um, running through let's say a thousand to three thousand plus pounds uh, a month you know in terms of product um you know when you get into the the the, the uh you know twenty thousand pounds a month or something along those lines you know th that's a very different business than what we're interested at current to be in 
but we do see it as a huge opportunity between uh, one to, uh, I would say one to 10,000 10, pounds a month that we're gonna be scaling up towards. You know, ideally, really what we look for is brands and genetics companies to work with. Uh, so, you know, there's a handful of um, entertain, entertainers that we're talking to regarding um, uh, opportunities within that marketplace to get them introduced into the smoking sensation, as well as brands, other brands that are currently on the shelf as well, that are looking to have in a premium indoor flower. And again, we're a business really more of the, uh, the eternal inside, you could say, uh, uh, in terms of uh, we're, the, we're the engine that's powering us. Ideally that we're looking to power uh, large brands out there in the market. Okay. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. That, I mean, that sounds great. So it sounds like overall, um, you know, whether there's, they got to, they have a, have to have a certain level of volume, right? So ideally yeah, in like, say absolutely. the thousand, thousand pound a month range, but um, you know, yeah. that's not that large for a lot of retailers, larger no. retailers and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Now, as a former technologist, um, mm -hmm. I, you mentioned a lot about the technology of the growing can you dive into that for us? I mean, I know in, in the introduction, um, we talked, or I mentioned a bit about uh, indoor vertical farming. So can we talk a bit about the technology you guys yeah. are utilizing? Yeah, so we're looking at a, a little bit different. A lot of grows that we initially saw within the hemp space were single tier, right? Maybe two tier, et cetera. We're growing um, eight tiers, eight tiers high. Eight, um, you said eight tiers? Eight tiers high, yes. And so how, eight tiers how high. high does eight tiers go? Like how around how fourteen, around around thirteen, fourteen feet. Okay. Right. So the way that we're growing is a little bit different. We have uh, um, we're looking at this from really supply chain management, you know, practices. You know, I know in, in your previous in a previous guest you asked in terms of the passion or the profit, and we have obviously both, uh, just because of our own personal experiences within the uh, within cannabis with cannabis. And then, of course, what we see is the market opportunity. So we really looked, you know, as, as many things in this company, we looked left when everyone was looking right. We said, well, there's got to be a way in which we can make indoor affordable, right? Just because there's got to be a way that, it, you know, I'm not talking about going bottom basement, definitely not a race to the bottom, but really making indoor high front premium quality hemp uh, affordable and, um, you know, at a massive, at a scale that we believe that we can do. So. Our, our 16,000 square feet we'll be building out uh, within the coming months. And then after that, we can really start scaling up to the 72 uh, just because of the way the technology works and the monitoring that we have in terms of really understanding all the, uh, all the dialed in in terms of pH levels, you know, RO levels, et cetera. So. Very cool. Well, I, uh, I started growing in the past and I've, I've worked under... Uh, I've grown in multiple different techniques and systems, but never eight tiers. I mean, that sounds, <laughs> that sounds awesome. So I'm definitely going to have to hit yeah. you up for some, some pictures and a tour at some point. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Absolutely. Now we've only got a few seconds left. There was one last, there was one question I had at the beginning, but we, we kind of brushed over it that I was curious about when you met with your partner at the real estate conference, when you guys yeah. started talking about the hemp opportunities and the opportunity zones, Please tell me you guys were smoking a joint when you guys were talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> out of my out of my co-founder and I, I'm the only one that smokes, so you know, he doesn't participate. But uh, yeah, no, we were. You know, it, it was so crazy. I mean, in some ways, you know, market was so crazy. Like we're like, yeah, let's go into hemp. Yeah, why not? Yeah, we're two guys who have no idea about anything of this of this industry. <laughs> Let's do that, you know, but uh, it's been it's been a wild ride. I mean, it's definitely I think it's it's great to see what you put together and really, really classing up the joint in many ways, you know, just from what we've seen. So I really, really appreciate all your efforts in Cantrade's platform. Thank you. Well, I appreciate everything you're doing for the hemp industry because it's, you know, it's guys like you that are bringing that that professionalism into the space. Um, so thank you very much. And this this wraps up our time, but it was a pleasure chatting with you. Uh, if you're interested in connecting with Michael and Eternity Hemp, please, sorry, Eternal Hemp, please add them to your network on CanTrade. You can also place orders and ask questions directly from the Eternal Hemp wholesale store posted in the webinar chat, also in the CanTrade feed and in the podcast and YouTube show notes. Once again, thank you for joining us, Michael. Thanks. Thank you. All right.